Training Module 3.1 Soil Water Retention and Soil Water Movement. The learning objectives of this presentation is to understand how AquaCrop describes water retention and water movement in the soil profile. To explain this, we will first focus on the description on the soil water balance to understand how AquaCrop simulates the soil water balance. Subsequently, we move to soil water movement to understand how AquaCrop simulates the movement of water in the soil profile. Finally, we will know which parameters are required by AquaCrop to simulate soil water retention and soil water movement. Let's start with the soil water balance and first focus on some major soil physical characteristics. We will review soil texture and bulk density. A soil consists of solid particles and organic material. The solid particles are classified according to their size in several fractions. The large particles are the sand particles, intermediate one silt particles and the very small one clay particles. Now clay particles are very important because they have a large surface on which a lot of water and cations can be absorbed. The relative proportion of the mass of sand and silt and clay defines the textural class. Therefore, we use the textural triangle in which 12 textural classes are defined. So let's assume that the relative proportion of the mass of sand is 35% and the relative proportion of the mass of clay is 22%, then we get a loamy soil. The bulk density is the amount of dry mass per unit volume of soil in its natural field condition. So, we have to sample the soil in its natural field condition, which we will do with a ring, a steel ring, which has a volume of 100 cubic centimeter. We go to the field and gently push it in the soil profile to obtain an undisturbed soil sample. To determine the bulk density, we bring our sample to the lab. We put it in an oven during 24 hours at 107 degrees to evaporate all the water. So when it comes out of the oven, we can determine the dry mass per unit volume of soil as we found it in its natural field conditions. So we have solid particles in the sample and the solid particles, they have a density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeters. And we have also soil pores, which has no density. Let me show you the link between bulk density and porosity. We know that the particle density is 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Soil pores has no density, there is no mass. So most soils has a porosity of about 50%. The bulk density will be 50% of pores with density zero plus 50% of solid material with density 2.65. This is 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. If the soil is more sandy, the porosity is lower and might be up to 40%. These are the sandy soils. The bulk density is 40% of pores with density zero, plus 60% of solid material with density 2.65, it gives me a bulk density of 
the more clayly soils has a porosity up to 55%. These are the clayly soils. Their bullock density will be 55% of density zero plus 45% of solid material with density 2.65. It has a density of 1.2. In this slide, some indicative values for bulk density and pore space are given for the 12 textural classes. A clay loam soil with a pore space of 50% has a bulk density of 1.3. Above are the more sandy soils, which has a smaller pore space and hence a larger bulk density. Below are the more clayly soils, which has more pore space but a smaller bulk density.